Returning to Yu-Gi-Oh! can be intimidating. Luckily, there are a lot of great creators out there who provide helpful content. But this, this is my journey. While getting back into the game is mostly expensive, I'm doing it the smart way. And buy the singles! This series is dedicated to building a competitive deck, but only with singles and on a mightily small budget. 2 euro and 50 cent per week. Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! Heroes. Hello my fellow gentle nerds, this is Echo for episode 12 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Heroes. And this week, I mean, this is pretty much one of the most impactful episodes that we are going to have in a long time, I think. I think. Maybe it doesn't impact the way we play this deck so much right now, but it makes a starting point for it. And I'm very excited that we are there. You are going to, I mean, not love this opening in that case that it's so many, but in the value of the cards, you're going to love it this week. Also, I think I made a few decisions about the series going forward. This is the 12th episode and I think it marks somewhere of the midway point of the series. I don't think this series will pass the 30 episodes or the 25 episode mark. Don't worry, there are going to be coming series afterwards. But I think Heroes is going to end between the 20th and the 25th episode just because the cards that are, I mean, that are in the realm of the possible that I can afford for the series or that we actually can hunt for the series is limited. And that means the series could or would get stale if I would go for those expensive cards. This deck is not going to be at the peak of hero competitive deck performance. It is going to be close, but it's not going to be peak performance. Looking at cards like Lightning Storm, looking at cards like maybe Triple Tactics Talent or Forbidden Droplet, those cards you need three offs and those are crazy expensive, even more expensive than like the likes of Malicious Bane and Adusted Gold, which are the top hunt cards for us right now. And I think pushing it to the 20th episode and maybe getting one of those is a hard task. And other than that, it would be always the same deck and it would get stale. By that, I mean we are going to have some adjustments for the winnings that we're getting each week starting from episode 15. Up, up until then, everything is regular, but what is going to change, I will tell you in episode 15. But just so you know that it is happening and for you that it doesn't get stale or boring. I don't want that. I think you don't want that and you want to see some progress. And if I play by the rules that I set in the beginning, I think the series would overstay its welcome. And by that, I think we are ready to go into this week's opening. I hope you are going to love it, since I really loved it. My purse didn't, but you are going. See you there. Okay, this week, this week is huge. And when I say huge, I mean huge. Well, not um, malicious bane, it does it gold huge, but fairly huge. And you are going to see what I mean by this right now. Because the first card that we are adding this week is Vision Hero Increase. We got him, ladies and gentlemen. And this card is, I say it's a bridge. I mean, if this card is in the grave, when I receive battle damage, I can set it to the spell and trap zone, then tribute summon a card a monster from the field and then I can special summon it and then well I can get a vision hero monster level 4 or lower for a special summoning from deck that would be Vion then as a target. So what we have here is a very vers versatile card if I get it in grave if I I don't know can um, get it by the effect of Ferris so many options that I have and talking about Ferris, 
there he is. Yes, the top loader looks absolutely shitty and that is not my top loader. <laughs> that is the top loader that it came shipped with. I haven't even taken him out yet. I'm going to do that right now as well as for the thumbnail shot. And there he is in all his glory, vision hero Ferris. I can special summon him from hand by discarding another card and then I can um, place a vision hero monster from my deck to this bell and field zone. And if you remember the effect of increase, yeah, he can special summon itself from the spell and trap zone. Technical difficulties, oh my god. <laughs> he can special summon himself from the spell and trap zone by tributing another monster, which would be Ferris, just to get the increase search and special summon from deck. And those are the cards that we are adding. Just those two were 2450, and that is by far the most I have ever spent on two cards, period. But we are going to have to cut out a few cards from the deck to insert them. And the first card that I'm cutting, maybe I will, reg re I will regret it, but the first card that I'm cutting is one polarization. We still have one in deck, but I feel we have, by using Vion's effect, a way to search polarization. And we have so many ways to get to Vion and get the effect of Vion that I feel we can cut one polarization. Maybe we will need this more often and I will put a second one back into the deck, but right now it is gone and we are going to move one Torrential Tribute since we had two in the main to the side deck. So we have two Torrentials in the side and going out of the side deck is going to be the bottomless trap hole. We have two, so it is still down to one and we have still the option to go for a bottomless, but for this deck, we are not. And by this, this is the new cards for this week. We are getting rid of those three boys or moving them. And we are adding those. So this is this week's budget, <laughs> and I mean, a lot of weeks budget spent on those two cards. We are still in need of two more Ferris, which is the important and unfortunately expensive card. And we are in need of one increase at least. I found myself in situations while testing that I had the increase in hand and I couldn't dump him. Well, I could, but it is situational then. So it is not good to have just one increase in the deck you are going to need two and you, we are going to we want to max ferris since ferris is the combo starter here ferris and the um, <laughs> destiny hero delicious <laughs> is the absolute must have combo for this deck so that's it right into the duels so for this week's duels we are up against the pokemonok as usual and my hand is okay-ish and i really want to go for the combo but i completely failed that combo that i was able to do by setting vion in the spell and trap zone which is a completely dead card there so in the end he could do what he wants uh, wants to pop my ferris and then decides to super poly into um, his starving venom, which didn't go as he wanted it. But in the end, he gets Levianir out, and I want to compulse the starving venom. From there, he could beat me for 4000 with his um, Hope Harbinger and the LP, but he negates my e call. I set a card, the increase, and pass the turn. I don't think this is going too well and he could special summon two cards out and that is more than enough damage. I try to get my increase out there, but it is not enough. Game two. I make him go first. He sets two and um, does his melody thing and gets out the blue eyes alternative dragon. My hand doesn't look too bad. I normal summon Stratos. He finished chains it and I want to mask change it, which he dimensional barriers 
of course calling fusion so i couldn't do anything set a card and pass take a beating well i would have if i didn't discard the dine attack and then i try to do this whole thing again getting the solid soldier out special summoning vion and dropping uh, the malicious to get another malicious and what does he do he super polys me getting out starving venom i get out the masked hero diane and get my vion back thinking if i crash it into his um his starving venom i still get the special summon which i don't he tries to get out levianir i strike it and from there it doesn't look too good for me but i get the raigeki and pass turn hoping he doesn't draw into anything good. He doesn't, sets a card and passes. I don't draw either and still hope he doesn't draw anything. He draws into a Sage which has zero attack but gets him a white stone. So in the end, no danger here. I get out the Shadow Mist and he gets out his chains again. Where I can mask change again into Dark Law so I was safe hitting over his Sage. And now I'm in a very good spot. He draws into anti spell fragrance and sets his white stone. From where I get out the Vion, dump a shadow mist, get a surge. And that was the liquid soldier fusing away the, um, the plasma and the liquid soldier into absolute zero from where he just scoops the game since he knows he can't do anything against it. Game three was a bit different. That game took place on a whole different day than the other two. So that was unfortunate. I go first again with the Stratos, setting one card. So always not having two good cards in hand, getting the Ferris. I crow his white stone. I don't know if it was the best choice, but he actually tries to pop my Stratos. I get out the Divine Wind and he gets his Spirit Dragon getting high, the Moonlight Dragon out and popping my Divine Wind, getting out Levianir, Scarlet Dragon, Red, Arch Red Archfiend, and that was the moment where I had to leave this place, my, my workplace, and where I lost my focus on the game a bit, tried to do my stuff with um, the combo that I want to use, and I get unfortunately chaliced on the Vion part, still can get out a Malicious, and go into Plasma, and what does he do? He has Super Poly. And that is more than enough to take game from me. And that's unfortunate. So we lost this match, but we won one game. For the match two, we are dueling Demo for his last episode of his first part of his series. And he is playing the Spirit Charmers Magic Spellcasters for the last time in this duel. He does a whole lot of things, getting Riliona and the Endymion out and getting the Selene and going into Bahamut Shark in the end, getting totally awesome on board, which is absolutely frightening. I tried to Regeki, but he sets my Regeki, which I, I completely blanked in that moment and then had the option to try to do my Fusion Destiny combo, getting into the Cross Crusader, getting back my Dangerous then activating again, getting the search for Liquid Soldier, getting back my Shadow Mist and searching from deck the Mask Change and activating it. I activated it not <laughs> because I wanted it, but because I thought I could go into Acid, which I can't since Fusion Destiny does not allow that. I could only go into Dark Monsters from there. So, um, unfortunate, my Dark Lord gets popped and he can actually build a bot that is very scary. Get out Borrowload Savage and then Regekis me. And you know, he is trying to flex on me. So this bot was more than enough damage. So I surrendered it. Yeah, and for the last game, he goes f for the second game. He goes first and gets out his Luna, uh, searching the Secret Witch of the Spellcasters, sets uh, special normal summons Crowley, sorry, and gets Area. He declares water so he can go into Bahamut Shark, discard one and detach one, sorry, and gets out his Totally Awesome. I draw into absolutely nothing, set one card and pass. He gets out Endymion, attaches the Magistus Moon Maiden, Artemis, I think, and he has a stacked 
stacked lineup and I only get cards to my hand, I think he couldn't finish me with 50 points, which is absolutely hilarious. I think he said during the match that he, if he played it correctly, he would have been able to finish me off. But he has totally awesome and a uh, two negate Appaloosa on board. And I don't think that is too much. I, well, discard, um, try to discard it. And I don't know why I surrendered there, but I think it was still one negate Appaloosa and I couldn't use my spell card since he still had the totally awesome on board. So I think I just surrendered there because I didn't saw any play potential. Unfortunately, we lost match one and two. And for the last match, we are up against Corvus, who's also doing a series like I'm usually having other creators on my show. And he plays Ice Barriers Magistus and he gets out his, I think, Bryanek and the, the very good Ice Barrier card. And I do a lot of stuff getting my Liquid Soldier to hand and getting the polymerization, getting into absolute zero, doing so much stuff, getting back my Liquid Soldier and from there I had so many cards. I really, really could go off since he had no negates for everything. I could pop a card with Sunrise and still attack for game. Game two. I go first, which is unfortunate. I set two, get out a Rhoda, get my Stratos and use the Stratos search to get on a Sneos, just to be a bit more safe. He has uh, his medallion and a crackdown in hand. I see that now and I fear crackdown, definitely. He tries to pop a card and that was Solemn Strike, so I couldn't even chain it. I then uh, bounce his normal summon and he gets the Revealer still out and his Hexa Spirit and Trishula gets a card of my graveyard out of my hand and out of my from my field banished that was um, not good but I still had fusion destiny hand so I could do recovery plays get out a cross crusader getting back my dangerous and I was a bit offensive there I played the dangerous in attack mode which I normally don't do I then get to my Shadow Mist and the search for Mask Change. And again, I did the same mistake that I did in the duel against Demo. I activated Mask Change after using the Fusion Destiny combo, which is so bad and he activates Crackdown. So now my stuff gets banished, which is a big problem, a big, big problem. He gets the Zero Dragon of the Ice Barrier out and attacks me for one hit and I feel like yeah I should do something and activate a hero lives which gets out my shadow mist and the uh, mask change search I normal summon the Stratos getting a search for Dynatech just to be safe and do not lose in the next turn and attack into the zero dragon getting it out but he gets the um, his normal Trishula back and my effect gets negated which is bad. He has Zorua and equips the uh, Magistus Synchro, gets a token out and another card. I chain the Dynatech and am on 300 life points. And from there it doesn't look too good. But we have Vion in hand. Can dump another Vion. And that was the moment I realized I don't have any targets for Vion to dump. So... Maybe I could have tried for Fusion Destiny, but I don't think it was life since I didn't have two or more Destiny Hero monsters or Destiny Hero and Dark monsters to get Dystopia. So I think no card I had was life and that is enough for him to take game two. Game three. He goes first, sets one, passes. And that looks good for me. I activate Ecall, getting a solid soldier, getting solid soldier out, activating effect for Vion, dumping the malicious, getting out the malicious, and then getting out the plasma, which is risky since we have seen where this goes. In not life plasma is a bad plasma. He then draws into, I don't know what this is, but he sets to and passes turn again. I hit plasma with plasma again. So plasma beatdown it is. He then gets out the Revealer in the end and I DD Crow that um, Warlock thingy 
and he crackdowns me where I think oh my freaking god no but I torrential just for safety I then activate the hero list which is so risky on 8000 life points losing 4000 is very much then having the mask change and activating it just to get Dark Law out and now I was sure I have won the game. He is on 800 life points and I had the Dyn attack in hand. And you know, if he tries to do some damage, I can always use the Dyn attack and he loses a thousand points. He tries to do some stuff, I think he tries to hit over me and I activate the Dyn attack, so he loses. Wow. Well, that's for this week's duels. We actually won one match one game and that's it i mean 350 in the end for the bank not too shabby i think that means and i will calculate some stuff from the episodes before so you know what is happening here i just want to clarify we didn't always spend the whole budget like look at episode 9 where we just spent 30 cents on three cards and on episode 11 where we actually had some leftovers still after the violence and the blast so in the end we actually spent 2450 completely for those two cards that means we could subtract 250 from this week's budget we had um, two euro and 85 cents still left from not used budget from weeks and then we have to use some of our winnings and that brings us down to 16 euro and four cents with this week's winnings we are at 19 euro and 54 cents that we are still having in our winnings account i think we are looking pretty good and we are still on our way to adusted gold and malicious spain and i think we are going to hunt those down before we go into the final vision heroes just so we have these this powerful package and being able to deal with more stuff before we actually complete our consistency with the vision heroes i think that may be the way to go i don't know what you do, what you think about this tell me in the comments should we go for the vision heroes first like adding still two more ferris and one more increase or do you think we should go full force into malicious bane and adusted gold of course with dark dark calling we need that as well but tell me what you think in the comments down below and i am well looking forward to seeing it i hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Yu-Gi-Oh heroes i really enjoyed recording it doing it having the duels and i hope to see you in the next episode i hope you subscribe to the channel if you like the content and gave this video a like it really helps out a lot I really enjoy the support that I'm getting. So other than that, I think that's it for this week and hope to see you in the next episode. See you then. Bye bye.